Okay, so should we just should we just talk about it then? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about it because DC fandom sure. or fandom happened over the weekend, and yes. they revealed a lot of stuff from the movies that we're I'm excited to watch. We're not going to talk the about it here because the Batman because we talk about gaming stuff. Yeah. Um, but they also revealed some great news coming to gaming. Yeah. Um. So. One of the first panels of the day was from WB Montreal, as I was mentioning on the podcast last week when we were hearing about all the teasing that they were doing. Uh, they had their panel, and they revealed their game. It's called Gotham Knights. It is it is a it is a single player game. It is known like it's officially classified as an action RPG. Um, it's it, it's a single player game that can be experienced on your own. However, there is a one to two player online co op component to it. Cool. Um, the setup of the game is that Batman has died, like apparently died. Isn't that a, um, isn't that like a thing in like a movie? One of the movies. Um, it's, it's, there's comic books about it. Yeah, oh, there's okay. comics. It's hap- it yeah. happened at the end of Dark Knight Rises, where it's the whole bomb and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so it's 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 a completely brand new thing, not connected to any of the previous Arkham games. It's just its own thing. Batman. It, the setup is that Batman died. He, he essentially hands over his mantle, if you will, to the Bat family. Um, there are four playable characters in Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl, and Red Hood. And yeah, the, it just it looks like it's going to be really fun. It's got its open world, five districts to explore in Gotham. It's cool. got those RPG elements, leveling up your characters. I'm assuming because it's an RPG that each character is going to assume a role pretty much. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like Red Hood looks like a freaking tank in the game, so he's probably going to be the brawler or the big bruiser type character. And it just it looks like a lot of fun. Some people though are definitely upset. There are a couple of mixed reactions online, specifically because Batman's apparently not in it and not playable. <laughs> uh but I don't know. I guess that doesn't really upset me like we got four Batman games and a bunch yeah. of people were yeah. complaining leading up to the teasing of this game like Oh, we're getting another Batman game. Like, why don't you give other people the time to shine? And then WB Montreal. <laughs> they are. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's dead. And then, and then WB Montreal was like, okay, we're going to do exactly that. And people were like, no, but but why but can't Batman. I play as Batman? <laughs> yeah. So so everyone, there's, there's a couple of mixed opinions. I think a majority of the mixed opinions comes from the fact that it's like, it's not an Arkham game, both in its story and in its combat. It yeah. plays very much like an RPG. Enemies have health bars. They have levels. Same with the bosses. They showed a little bit of a Mr. Freeze boss fight in there. So that's something that I think a lot of people are concerned about. But I don't know. For me, it just, it just looks fun. You can ride yeah, around on the bat so cycle. Fun. All four yeah. of the characters. It looks like really fun, you can, actually. You can jump online with your friend and just roam around in Gotham. You know? Just like yeah. it's an open world. You, that, that, that you do whatever you want. Robin can teleport. He like accesses a Justice League satellite and can teleport or do some crazy stuff like that. It just looks like a blast to play. And yeah, maybe the yeah. combat's not going to be like the Arkham games. It's not going to be free flow and feel as good as the Arkham games. But it looked like it was still borrowing and it still had like the DNA of an Arkham game in there. They're just implementing a new idea and taking a new spin on something that people might be familiar with. And I like that. Like, I don't I don't want just Arkham games over and over and over again. I got four of them. You know, I'm. I am satisfied with that world. I would take more Arkham games anytime. I'm sorry. I would take I more understand Arkham that. Games, I understand that. But I, I also I, would rather just W Montreal just do their own thing and have fun and be creative. Yeah. You know? I think I think sure. in this situation, what we saw, firstly, it, it looks like an amazing game. It looks like yes. kind of yeah. why I'm excited to play this game is first part is Red Hood's in it. Second yeah. part is uh, it's giving me a lot of the Avengers v- game vibe um, that it's making me excited for that game to play alongside of my friend with my mm-hmm. friends with um as i would with gotham Knights. so i'm excited for this game but i think this is a case why fans are kind of or some fans are kind of upset and i think it's a small uh section of fans that are upset it's yeah, because, a vocal minority because mm-hmm. of the fact that when this game was being rumored everyone thought that it was gonna be an arkham game that yes. wp montreal was working on and we've seen this now in this situation where rumors could kind of hurt the reaction that fans mm-hmm. can have against the game if there were no rumors of wb working on an arkham game 
then fans would have been all fans would have been happy just to see this type of Batman game coming out. Um, also calling it a Batman game. We can't call it a Batman game because he's dead. I mean, it's still dead Batman it. game. It's a- it, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to give the love to all the other characters in the Batman universe, right? Like when you Bat start fan. calling it a Batman game and you go to your friend who may not have heard the news of this game being revealed and you're like, WB Montreal is talking about is doing a Batman game. Batman automatically puts high standards to what we would expect. We have to start calling this Gotham Knights, okay? It's Gotham Knights. We're going to be playing as Batgirl, right. Robin, Nightwing, and Red Hood, okay? It's a mm-hmm. whole cool experience. I think when you go into discussing like this game with people who are may have high expectations, who are fans of the IPs, but not necessarily fans of gaming, then you're setting the right expectations. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think that WB Montreal is doing that. They, they said off the bat, like, if they held that, that news piece that Batman's dead to, like, another trailer, think how disappointed... Oh, Fans right. would be right. Yeah. They oh, right. right yeah. out of the bat. That out of the gate, they're like, game. Exactly. I'm yeah. glad that right out of the gate they were like, listen, we know you guys like your whole Batman shtick. That's not this game. You know, they didn't yeah. they didn't mm-hmm. wait until the second or third trailer. They they let you know right from the get-go, hey, Batman, the homies dead. Pull the band-aid. Yeah, we don't know. Something- but like, sorry, go ahead. So in like The Last of Us 2, they disappointed their fans because they made that oh. trailer and showed um yeah. Joel. Yeah. Yes. And then his actual game, it was that other guy. I forget his name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's that was like the mismarketing there. That certainly is what caused a bit of the outrage with the Last of Us Part Two. But at least in this case, like so, yeah, they're, they're not, not lying like, to you, Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great point, Victoria. Yeah, and 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 there are there are theories, you know, like for instance, at the end of the trailer, um, they they showcase something which the the most exciting thing for me about the game is that they're introducing the Court of Owls. And yes. For those who don't know, yes. the Court of Owls, a, a, they they come from the New Fifty Two. They're a pretty. It's a pretty recent storyline that was introduced in comic books, and it's about this organization that lives under and pretty much controls Gotham, like yeah. all of it. And then they have these these talons that they call them um, that are all like these superhuman undead, almost like, like uh, immortal beings pretty much that they just send out to assassinate like important people of Gotham. So right now, one of the biggest running theories is that maybe Batman was kidnapped by them. Oh. Maybe they're the ones who killed Batman. Wow. Um, but overall it's just it, they, it, the, the storyline. If there's any comic I would ever recommend somebody, it's these two Batman under the red hood and Batman Court of Owls in those are comics. Story Maybe lines. they yes. could even like lead it into they write those down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for they, sure. They can. And they touched on, you know, the Arkham games touched on these storylines as well. Um, a bit, but and also in the animated movies, they have uh, as well touched on these storylines. So if you want to watch any of those, they're good yeah. too. But yes, Court of Owls, I do I can see, okay. I can see for the core when it releases, you don't play as bad in. I can't see how is, however, a story DLC where you investigate the Red Hood, I'm sorry, the Court of Owls further, and they have, like, it It shows that you could actually get Batman to play as. Maybe. So I, my question yeah. is, with this game, because of how it's set up, how it's an RPG, mm-hmm. how is payment going to go with this game? How are we going to see fans paying for things? Is it going to be Oh, managed- Mike, transactions, you think? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no. I'm worried about that. Are we going to well, see that? That's why I'm worrying a game items. like this. I I hope it's just there, customization. There but. is a gear system. There is gear that you unlock for your characters. Like you can even see in some of the like there's a there's a trailer and a gameplay presentation. You can see that the characters look different in design, yeah. and that's because mm-hmm. of the gear system. I do hope that it won't be like pay to win scenario. It won't be like pay for pay two dollars for this cool piece of Robin gear well, or something what if like they that. They get a bunch of backlash if that that's, was the case. That's that's why I no imagine it won't be. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and I, they're robbing your bank. I know, and, I feel like, <laughs> and I feel like uh when I was watching the trailer too, like I saw Robin in the red Robin wear, and I was like, wait a second, that's not like because when I was looking at this trailer, I was like looking for a story element, right, to these games. Yeah. Because as a fan of Batman, I'm just like, what story like are they gonna do? Like they teased Court of Owls at the end, but before we got up to that point, I'm like, okay, Mr. Freeze is here. Like, what what's going on with the story? Yeah. Um, but I think this is a game, yes, they're gonna have some sort of story element to it as they teased with Court of Owls. 
However, it's going to be a, a game that I feel like we'll probably have a, a longer service to. So yes. we will see lots of DLCs. Whether we pay for those DLCs or not will be interesting. Um, because like we don't know anything about how much this game is going to be priced at, right? If, I think if the when full we, game, if the full yeah. game offers enough of an experience beginning to end that I enjoy, I have no problem paying for DLC. And if exactly. it feels like the DLC is like missing content from the story, then we got an issue. Exactly. So it, yeah. I I feel like we have to know more about like how much this game is going to cost, like yeah. what is yeah. going to be included in the game to really understand if a DLC would be worth buying or not. Um, yeah. I do want to say, get to some comments, sorry, in chat. Baron uh, says, in their Twitter article, or in their article on Twitter, they said, you'll fight the most iconic DC villains, and they show Tim use what show tim use of justice what just leaked yeah. oh tim's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so robin tim has Drake. that teleport yeah, yeah. where he hacks use into a justice league, justice satellite. league yeah. teleport from the watchtower so uh yep. my question is there a possibility for not only villains from batman rosters to show up in the game and if so which one would you like to see Caboose. well um i mean i'm trying to work on a video about this specifically but right now we know mr freeze is in there we know the court of owls are in there um, last year, since last year they were teasing this, you know, I was talking about this last week and one of the, one of the little cryptic logos they teased last year was of the league of assassins. So like Ooh. Rachel Ghoul, the demon's head, all that stuff. I have a feeling that's going to be a big part of the game as well. And overall, like, it looks like, especially if you watch the gameplay demo and you're listening to the developer commentary, he's saying when, when Batgirl's like going into this Mr. Freeze mission, he's saying that it's a part of the Mr. Freeze campaign. Yeah. So that leads me to believe that like there's going to be a like there's going to be a, a through line story maybe about the Court of Owls as the main antagonist, but there's going to be branching storylines about these other DC villains. You know, a Mister Freeze storyline that has a beginning, middle, and end. A, a League of Assassins storyline that has a beginning, middle, and end. If they put in Two Face in there, you know, a whole thing with that too, and that could be really cool. That could, the amount of hours I'm just imagining logging into this game has me really excited. I don't know. Yeah. I know, again, the the, the three-letter word, if you will, RPG, is very scary for yes. these Batman fans. But for me, why is I'm it scary? all for it. I'm yeah, all why good. is that so... I wish I, I could explain that. I wish I, mean, <laughs> I, wish like, I could I explain think RPGs are fun. Why, I think why RPGs are so scary, because they could seem um, very time-consuming. Um, they could seem very overwhelming for people who aren't used to that experience and when we see superhero games usually you see them in the action adventure genre um where it's more linear you're more in control in terms of the stories um and you see like open world aspects or with some of the arkham games you see a complete open world um that's contained yes. but for the yes. most part it feels like an it's an action adventure game, right? Mm -hmm. um, RPGs in terms of upgrading uh, your character, figuring out all those aspects, I think could be intimidating to some people in the fan base. And rightfully so, I understand, but they just need to kind of give it a try. And it's mm -hmm. also up to the developers to help their, uh, or to really understand what they want out of the game. If it is yeah. fan service yeah. for just people who are fans of DC or like fans of Batman, then they do need to have um, kind of a dumbed down RPG system, right? Yeah. If it is just for those hardcore fans that are gamers, then they may not need to do that. Yeah, it's just I, that a lot of people like to point the comparison to Assassin's Creed. You know, we yeah. had it. We had there was a version of Assassin's Creed that a lot of people were familiar with, and then I think it was with Origins and Odyssey, I believe. I, I don't follow yes. the franchise as yes. much, it's but that's where they started to go into the it's RPG a element. Bit more. Yeah, um, and pe people didn't like. There was def there's definitely a part of the audience that didn't like it, but also like that was kind of what revitalized the Assassin's Creed yeah. franchise. Yeah. Yeah. And so I could potentially see the same scenario here where, yes, maybe the core fan base of people who play the Arkham games are like, we don't like this, but there may be a whole new fan base to introduce to these games because yeah. of the RPG elements. And I feel like we should be okay with that and, and be willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to give it a yeah. chance. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it's just because but, it's me well, and it's my I think, opinion. I think also we should give it a chance because there's another uh, DC experience yes. gaming. Uh, Caboose, do you want to chat about that for a bit? Right. So Gotham Knights was not all for, for Saturday in terms of me losing my mind. Unfortunately, <laughs> I couldn't catch a break on that one because later in the night, 
We got a reveal from Rocksteady and their next game. These are the guys who made the Arkham wow. games. Yeah. And their next game, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, so was officially good. revealed. Yeah, was no good. gameplay. Actually really good. Yeah. No, no gameplay, but a CGI trailer. And based on the press release, a lot of what is shown in the CG trailer is reflective of what you can do in the game. And okay. so break the it premise, down. Like what? What? Like yeah. give an ex example of like what we saw. Right. In CG so, that we could do. So for instance, one one big mention was that you have these enhanced traversal abilities. So for instance, Deadshot's got the jetpack, and you see yeah. there's a moment in the trailer where he does this like fuel dump and just starts burning enemies on the side of a building. That's something you can do in the game. You do a fuel dump That's move cool. with his jetpack cool. to just like an AoE attack, if you will, to just burn a ton of enemies. Um, it looks like Captain Boomerang has a bit of the Flash's abilities, so he can kind of run around. Um, King Shark just looks super lovable and and fun <laughs> as a character. Just this giant shark dude awesome who just I want to be that guy. Yeah, he just looks super kind, and he looks like he's got like you know he could be leaping bounds, <laughs> doing exactly. ground pounds. Yeah, so he looks like a lot of fun. And overall, essentially, the the, the DNA of of these characters and and what they're trying to do here with this game is that. It's supposed to be fun. It is a very different tone from the Batman Arkham games and all the dread and depressing like yeah. vibes that you get from those games. This is very much the opposite. It is just a ton of fun. And I think conceptually, the Suicide Squad, it's it's a stupid idea. You know, making the villains be heroes. They have chips in their head and you're gonna blow their heads off if they don't do it's don't do what you say. Like, idea. It's, it's, the it's, it's the best it's the best That's actually what's going on with that. Yeah, we have to the chips on our head. That's why we do yeah. it. So um, it's no. super goofy, and it feels like that's exactly the tone that they're trying to capture. Oh here. my god, the writing! Yeah, the, and the, and the chemistry with funny. the characters. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. This this whole like trailer, just like okay, because we got the tease. We talked about that on the last squad yes. uh, cast that they released that poster, so we knew we were getting um, recently a Suicide Squad game. I always said, like, I wasn't too happy with the movie The Suicide Squad. So what I would want out of the game is something that's really humorous and goes into other members of The Suicide Squad. And I yeah. love that this actually parallels the – is it a reboot movie that they announced or, like, their their second Suicide Squad movie that DC is putting out? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Here kind of – like, having King Shark in here kind of represents that. So I'm excited that it, it seems like – the, they're talking you know the movies are kind of talking to or like aware of what there's the going to be some cross promotion there's, there there's going to yeah. be some cross promotion um yeah. i but i do like that they didn't go with the actor uh look of yeah, their character design uh just because you know i, I don't necessarily want to see although margot robbie okay. pretty i i don't necessarily want to see her as harley quinn because this is a game and if whatever is the future for the suicide squad game it's always safe just to do a separate character design because you never know oh what yeah well Rock, yeah. rock City's never been about that too when exactly. they were making the batman games they were they were not trying to base it on anything in the movies they were working yeah. on the batman games and and most of their inspiration comes from the animated series but also they just they made their own thing. And it looks like it, that's exactly what they're doing with Suicide Squad. I love the tone. I love what they're trying to do. These characters look like a ton of fun. And I can't wait to see what it's going to be like to play as or play as them. It was also mentioned uh, one to four players online co-op is an option in this game. That's going to yeah, be something sweet. you can do. Um, however, I will say, based on what's mentioned in the press release and based on the interview that was done during DC Fandom after they showcased the game with one of the developers, it sounds like this game is going to be a lot more fun to actually play by yourself because one of the features playing on your own is you're going to have the whole squad there. They will be AI, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. you can switch between any character on the fly, like at any moment's notice. So if I'm playing as Deadshot and I'm flying around in my jetpacks and I want to switch over to King Shark and start biting heads off, I could do that in the snap of a finger. Like, <laughs> boom, I'm not playing as that character. And you can do all that while you're in this open world, while you're in Metropolis and you're going to try and kill the Justice League. It's just... It sounds like a blast. Yeah. Like it sounds like it really a really does. fun game, and I'm really yeah. hyped for it. It's a truly next gen game too. It's coming out in two years, which, damn, I gotta yeah, wait. Well, wait. Uh, <laughs> but it's gonna be a truly next gen game. PS5, Series X, PC. It's not coming out on Xbox One or PS4, so they don't gotta worry about the current tech holding anything back with this game. Uh, and and I'm just I'm super hyped for it. I'm really really excited. It sucks that it was announced this early because it means like we're not gonna see anything. Yeah. 
for at least a year. Yeah. But hey, it's happening. Rocksteady's next game is coming out. And the cherry on top is that it's a continuation of, of the, the Arkham, Arkham games. games, which is amazing. It does, it does carry over from what was from the story of the Arkham games. So I'm telling you, based on what happened with Batman, the end of that game, there's going to be something interesting with Batman in this game. And I'm yeah. very intrigued cool. to see what they're going to do there. And I feel like just Rocksteady's just re they're really good at um, how they write the stories mm -hmm. like for the Ooh. Arkham games and just how they did. Ugh, it's so good. But in true Arkham fashion, I feel like we're going to see some DLCs here. So I feel like we're going to see other members of the Suicide Squad that oh, for sure. That definitely yeah. uh, fans for will sure. eat that up. My pockets already throwing money at <laughs> my system to get it right. Like I yeah. would eat up all the additional content coming from uh, this game. I love though that they decide to go this route with like Brainiac um, kind of taking over um, Superman yeah. because well, it does. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You can. So in the injustice game with which had the DC Marvel characters is like a fighting game. At the end of that game, there's two endings of good and bad. And one of the endings was basically Superman takes over Brainiac's technology. Yeah. To basically be a dictator over the entire world so everyone could be safe. Because um, in that, I guess, DC universe, Luz Lane was killed by the Joker. So it kind of made Superman go all power. Like, I have to protect yeah. everyone by controlling them. Yeah. And we can see connections between Injustice and the Suicide Squad because both have Brainiac in it. In the Suicide Squad, you saw Brainiac's like mechanical the big monster shit, yeah. on the city, and Superman had the purple eyes. So maybe Brainiac's not doing anything; it's all Superman. Yeah, I feel mm. like if Rocksteady, Rocksteady is very aware of like what's happening in the industry, especially with the other, um, uh, you know, games it, within the Batman universe. And I feel like if they were to borrow from Injustice. It won't be. It won't necessarily be the main, like the core story of the game, especially because we know it's connected to those Arkham uh, games. So I feel like if they were going to borrow it, it would be an interesting aspect to go the route of like maybe this is something that happened with Superman, and maybe we're seeing him kind of flow over into a dictatorship. Uh, it's interesting because throughout the Arkham games, we don't necessarily know how everything's going in Metropolis, right? So. It's it's interesting that they're opening up the world out of outside of Gotham um, and exploring these other places in the DC universe. So I feel like anything could go um, really when we look at all the other superheroes and where they're at. Yeah, this it just I, I'm I don't know. It's it's Rocksteady. It's a new game for Rocksteady. Like like I said, they made three like fantastic stellar games so i just have nothing but faith and i think one of the things i'm very excited about although this could change and who knows but based on all the information that they provided in the initial announcement of suicide squad kill the justice league doesn't sound like anything is presenting itself for this game to be set up as a games as a service like there were yes. rumors yes. Uh, and that's exciting it's just it's just it has an online co-op component and that's it there's yeah. going to be an ability to play with your friends up to four players online. And again, for me, that sounds, that sounds exciting with Avengers. It's an exciting concept. The only, I think misstep with that game is that it's not open world. It's these sort of little hub worlds. Isolated, whereas, yeah. whereas with Gotham Knights in the one to two player online, and then with suicide squad in the one to four players online, you're in an open world, like a yeah. fully explorable That's definitely the better world. Option. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But just I having that to just explore and have fun. And it's cool. Like a sandbox. Yeah, when yeah. I think of these studios and what they've developed in the past, you know, that's that's also a little bit of my fear. Like, I don't think it's going to be a game of a service, but when I think of Suicide Squad kills the Justice League or kill mm -hmm. the Justice League, I always wanted to say kills the Justice League. Yeah. Um, kill the Justice League. I think that we have to look at the fact that Rocksteady really has had experience with online co-op. Um, yes. So... I, will it be janky? Maybe, but they have lots of time to figure years. it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I, I'm hesitant, but I'm not. I'm. It's not going to hold me back from being excited for this game. I just yeah. think it's really great that there's so many co-op games coming out. I feel like yeah. Well, multiplayer really livens up the player base of a game because yeah. 
it's not just you. And if something's yeah. really hard, you can get help for it or just have mm -hmm. fun with your friends and have like a game night. I think it's also reflective of the whole streaming culture, right? Like, oh, and how oh, we that's true. with you our friends stream with yeah. other people and have like cross streams and just they saw squad state. Create a lot of entertainment. Mm. Squad state suicide squad stream in two years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. dude. and then we had to do Ghost of Tsushima and Fall Guys and Among Us. Yep. Oh my oh, yeah. god. And <laughs> We have lots oh, yeah. of games that we're gonna have to co-op stream, uh, but for now we're gonna have to call it for the po the podcast or squadcast because that's it for today. Uh, we we got to see Caboose nerd out at the end, mm -hmm. and I yes. feel like chat was loving every minute of it. Uh, mm -hmm. This he week, though, the game really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does know he he kind of knows his stuff, you know. He kind of just gets kinda. Stuff. Still mm -hmm. a little bit, just a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this week we have more in store for all of you at home. I'll be streaming tomorrow uh, some Battletoads to kind of get you guys acquainted with my feels for the game. As well on Wednesday, we're trying to set up a Dead by Daylight a stream. Maybe Victoria will be able to kind of teach us the ways of Dead by Daylight and we could all see how we go uh, with that. So I'll be streaming uh, between 12 and 4 right here Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we have uh, Thursday and Friday, Brody streaming some Rocket League. And on Saturday and Sunday between 2 and 6, we have Alex streaming some League. That was like beautiful. Yeah. That was wonderful. That was for you. Yeah. Was for you. Um, Victoria, <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest it's here. Uh, what do we have to look forward to for your next article? Or maybe some articles that are up right now. Like, what should we be reading? Well, um, I, so Dead by Daylight is releasing a new chapter probably in like two or three weeks. And the new killer was on the public test build. So I wrote up an article on the new killer about his new power and all the perks that are coming in the new chapter, how they'll affect the game, what you can do with those perks and stuff like that. And then um, I also recently wrote an Animal Crossing guide for catching beetles because oh. they're very um, flighty. If you just walk <laughs> next to them, they'll like fly away. And if they're like rare, it took you like an hour to find it and you just blew your chance. Well, I have a guide on it, <laughs> how to cool. catch Okay. All right, so we'll have to. I'm. I'm probably gonna read that Dead by Daylight. Um, one just because we we got to prepare for our own stream, and I know you have yes. more yes. on squadstate.com uh, for us to kind of take in if we want to get good at the game. Yeah. Caboose, what do you have coming <laughs> to you this week? Uh, yeah. I mean, you you know you can check me out on the socials at Caboose Ek on Twitter and Instagram. YouTube.com forward slash Caboose still covering like lot. There's still a lot to talk about with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and Gotham Knights. So I'm covering a lot of stuff there. Avengers is on the horizon. It's literally coming out in like a week, so that's really exciting. Oh. Um, and I'm also after the podcast gonna go watch the Batman movie trailer a thousand times because it was exceptional. <laughs> oh my god, we gotta talk. I have. I have thoughts. We need to talk about that. Um, but we won't do that here because we'll just mm -hmm. eat up another mm -hmm. hour and a mm -hmm. half. Um, <laughs> Alex, how about you? How, what do you have coming? Uh, well, I mean, I stream on Saturday and Sunday on Squad State and with League of Legends. Um, and then I stream on my channel, twitch.tv slash Puppy, kind of sporadically. So you can check me out on <laughs> my social, my Twitter. Social is the best way, yeah. right? Check yeah. me out there. All yeah. announcements on the socials. Yes. yes. And of course, for myself, just check out the socials for whenever I'm streaming, where I'm streaming, all that good stuff. Uh, maybe Caboose and I will do a stream nerding out because uh, I, I have a lot of thoughts about the movies. Uh, but if you have any thoughts, chat, about what we should d discuss next week, please let us know on our socials at Squad State on Twitter and everywhere else, as well as check out the website because, of course, Victoria has some cool articles, but all of our writers have really great stuff there as well, squadstate.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you guys next week. Bye for now. Bye.